فؤادك الايام فتى الاحكام الشرعيه ابو معلم الجويني now moves on to الاحكام الشرعيه why are we taking الاحكام الشرعيه because we just defined الفقه and in the definition of fiqh was what معرفه الاحكام الشرعيه so what's احكام الشرعيه what is احكام الشرعيه one has to know and i said we're going to take it uh, in a bit احكام الشرعيه what does it mean what does it mean first of all before i go in احكام الشرعيه is two types the احكام الشرعيه is two types احكام الشرعيه التكليفي احكام الشرعيه التكليفيه احكام الشرعيه التكليفيه we'll explain that don't worry write it for now the second one is الاحكام الشرعيه الوضعيه الاحكام الشرعيه الوضعيه two times so one is a تكليفي and then one is a وضعي um, and if you look at ابو معالم الجويد رحمه الله he says what احكامه سبعه that's what he says right what احكامه سبعه five the five first five are what احكامه الشرعيه التكليفيه the next two remaining which is الصحيح والباطل they're both what if you just go to the button and you look at it the last two is what احكام الشرعيه الوضعيه so but he doesn't distinguish it between it he makes it all in one um الاحكام الشرعيه brothers let's break it down what does احكام mean what does احكام mean linguistically المراد بالاحكام the احكام هي اذا الاحكام الشرعيه and الاحكام جمع حكم احكام is plural and the singular of it is what حكم that's the singular and it means linguistically المنع what does it mean linguistically المنع it is to prevent linguistically the word حكم what does it mean المنع ومنه قيل and because of that uh, the uh, ومنه قيل للقضاة حكم the judge the one who judges he is called what حكام why لأنه يمنع من غير المقضي because what happens when a judge when, when he rules who he, he allows something for someone and he prevents it from somebody else that's where the word comes from منع حكم means منع to prevent Ibn Athir said a speech which deserves to be mentioned. Ibn Athir. And as I said before, everything, inshallah, that I mentioned will be brought from the kitab of Abdul Rahman, uh, sorry, Abdullah ibn Salih al Fawzan, his sharah. Ibn Athir in his kitab al Nihaya, in his kitab al Nihaya, he mentions Ibn Athir, which is a dictionary. He mentions that the word hukum is based upon three things present in it. What does he say? Al-hukmu means al-ilmu to have knowledge of something. Brothers, understand to have knowledge of something, and inshallah we're going to come to the definition of knowledge in the book. Al-ilmu knowledge. Second one is al-fiqhu understanding. You might think to yourself, ilm and fiqh. Yes, the fiqh here is meant by al-waqi'. The ilm is the hukum of the Sharia. The ilm is hukm al-shari. That is the legislation of the Sharia. Ah. You have knowledge of it. The second one is what? Al fiqh is to know the waqi', the situation in which you're going to give a, fiqh, a ruling on. As the uh, ulama of Qawaid al Fiqh used to say, Al hukm ala shay'un far'un an tasawuri. To give a ruling on something, you have to have a perception correct about it. So the second one is what? Al fiqh. The third one is, Wal qada'u bil adli. That you judge the matter with justice. When those three are present, this is called hukum. What is it called? It is called a hukum. It then, brothers, the word hukum. What did we take it? What did, what did we say that it means linguistically? Linguistically, it means al manu, and that's how the poet said. Uh, the poet uh, Jalil in his diwan he said, "Abani Hanifata." أبني حنيفة أحكموا سفهاءكم إني أخاف عليكم أن أغضبا 
a Bani Hanifa, oh Bani Hanifa, the Alif in a Bani Hanifa, the Alif in there is Ya Bani Hanifa, the Alif here is Harfu Nida, Harfu Nida, Ya Bani Hanifa, oh people of Bani Hanifa, Ahkimu, Ahkimu Hukum, Ahkimu Sufahakum, prevent and stop your dim witted ones. So the word Ahkimu in the language that's how it's used. إني أخاف أعيفيا عليكم وأنا أغضبا for me to become angry with you. So here what does it mean? أبني حنيفة أحكمو أحكمو is stop to prevent. So in the language the word حكم is used as what? المنعو to prevent, to stop. To stop. Is to stop, stop. And we said that the linguistic meaning when we say this is حكم الله the role of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala fi adihi al-mas'ala al-wujub the role of Allah in this matter is that it's obligatory it means annahu qadha fiha that Allah has judged that it's obligatory wa mana'a al-mukallif and Allah has prevented the one who has been told to come with it min mukhalafati for him to oppose it that's what it means Allah has prevented you and prohibited you and not allowed you to oppose his speech to oppose his command that's why the word hukum is used for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. That is what it means linguistically. Well, hukum istilahan. So hukum technically means what? Ma dalla alayhi. It is that which has been shown. Khitabu shar'i. The addressing of the shara. The legislator. And the shara is the kitab and sunnah. What they have, what? So we're defining the word what? Hukum technically. We said, مَا دَلْ عَلَيْهِ That which is indicated by خِطَابُ الشَّرْعِ The addressing of the Sharia, The Kitab and the Sunnah. المتعلقو That is attached. بِأَفْعَالِ الْمُكَلَّفِينَ That is attached to the action of those who are burdened. We're going to mention each one by itself. مِنْ طَلَبٍ By way of request. أو تخيير أو by way of choice أو وضع أو by way of placing. آه. Let's start by mentioning the definition. ما دل that which it indicates خطاب الشرع خطاب الشرع is what الكتاب والسنة. What does it mean the first part? ما دل عليه that which it shows. For example, Allah said in the Quran وأقيم الصلاة establish the prayer وأقيمه الصلاة establish the prayer. This is what addressing from who. فهذا خطاب من الشرع. The كتاب الله تبارك وتعالى is addressing us to do what. To pray the salah. Which is what. على وجوب إقامة الصلاة. Allah is telling us that it's obligatory on us to pray the salah. That obligation is a حكم from الله تبارك وتعالى. It's a ruling. It's a ruling from الله تبارك وتعالى. وَخِطَابُ الشَّرَعَ The addressing of the Sharia, as I said, is the Kitab and the, the Sunnah. And it's attached to what? It is attached to the action of the Mukallafin. So, first of all, Hukum is that which indicates the addressing of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. This is Stilahan, Stilahan. When you say this is Hukum of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, what we mean is that which it indicates the addressing of the Kitab and the Sunnah. Okay? Which is attached to what? That addressing is directed at what? My action. It isn't addressed by my belief. It's not addressed to my belief. It's not. It's addressed to my action. Pay attention. And the way it's addressed to my action is either by request, come with it, or it's by me being given a choice, or by by a wada, by it being placed. It's one of those three. What does it mean? It being attached to my action. How is it attached to my action? First of all, let's know, know that the actions are two types. The actions are how much? There are two types. بِأَفْعَالِ المكلفين, It is either a speech or tark to leave of something. Or uh, an action of the limbs, the action of the heart, uh, sorry, the actions of the, the actions of the limbs. The actions of the the uh, tongue, and also the action of the heart, because the niyyah has to come in, intention. And also, leaving off. 
Leaving. So the leaving of something is an action. It's a fi'l. And the sharia, the hukum is connected to you leaving something off. And that is a fi'l. As Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said in the Quran, the act leaving something is an action. Allah said in the Quran, لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَلَى لِسَانِ دَاوُدَ وَعِيْسَ بَنِ مَرْيَمْ ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَرُوا وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ كَانُوا لَا يَتَلَاهَوْنَ عَمْ مُنْكَرٍ فَعَلُوهُ لَبِئْسَ مَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ The curse of Allah is on what? لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Allah تبارك وتعالى cursed them with the tongue of Ulaqin عَلَى لِسَانِ دَاوُدَ وَعِيْسَ بَنِ مَرْيَمْ Why? ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَرُوا First of all, they disobeyed us. وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ And they overstepped and exceeded their boundaries. Allah then says, كَانُوا لَا يَتَلَاهَوْنَ عَمْ مُنْكَرٍ فَعَلُوهُ they never used to stop each other from evil. If they saw one do evil, they wouldn't stop each other from this. So what did they leave off? Al-Amru bin Ma'roof wa-Nahi. Did they do something or did they leave something? They left something. After that Allah says, لَبِئْسَ What an evil thing, huh? لَبِئْسَ مَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ What an evil thing that they did. So Allah referred to their leaving of something as an action. And this is very important that one gives a consideration to this. Which is why? Which is what? That some people say to you, Okay, I follow the Prophet everything he did. But where's your evidence? I have to leave off something he left. Those who want to celebrate the Prophet's Mila Mawlid Ali's birthday, they will say, okay, Allah tells us follow, follow the Prophet's actions. Jameel, I do that. But do I have to follow him in what he left? And you say, yes, of course you do. He says, where's your evidence? Or in another way, do they, and in another wording, they say, you bring me evidence that I don't have, I'm not allowed to do the Milad al-Nabi. Here you say, listen, were you ordered to follow the Prophet's actions? He'll say yes to you. Jameel, do you think everything he did we have to do? In which obligation shows that? He says yes. Are we allowed to do everything he did? Of course he'll say yes, of course we are allowed. Unless evidence shows that it's specifically for him, alayhi salatu salam. Jameel, know that doing something and leaving off something is the same in our sharia. The sahabas, what did they say? لو جلسنا والنبي يعملوا when the Prophet was building the masjid, they said, if we sit down and the masjid, the Prophet ﷺ is building the masjid. If we sit down and the Prophet is building the masjid. This is an action that we are doing of this kindness. An action. They are sitting back, not doing anything. They will refer to it as what? Leaving the salah is an action. It's an action. Leaving off salah, not doing it, is an action. And you be sin. There's a ruling based upon your action. Your leaving is a hukum shara'i. Jameel. Also, your, the qawl, the speech is an action. A speech is an action. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ta'ala, he said, يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ زُخْرُفَ الْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا فَإِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ لَيُوحُونَ إِلَىٰ أُولَيْهِمْ لِيُجَادِلُوكُمْ فَإِنَّ طَبْئِنَكُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ Allah says they send revelation to one another. Whisper to one another. Allah referred to a speech. After what did he say? If Allah willed, they would not have done the action. So Allah referred to their speech as what? An action. It falls under the af'al al-mukallafeen. Now, brothers, pay attention. The a'afal al in which the ahkam al is based upon, you have to understand, it's very important, is not meant by that which Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala created you and the way he created you. That's, that's not, it doesn't fall under hukum shara'i. Such as, when Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says to us in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ Allah says, we created you. ثُمَّ صَوَّرْنَاكُمْ And we made you into this image that you are. This is not This is not my actions. It's whose actions? Tabarak wa ta'ala. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Also, i'tiqad and all of them, they leave. Ikhwani, so we said what? Hukum is what? Hukum is ma dalla alayhi khitab al-shara. Al-muta'alliqu bi-af'al al-mukallafin. Talaban. Ha? Aw takhiran. Aw wab'an. So we mentioned, bi-af'al ish? بأفعال المكلفين The مكلفين is two types مكلفين is a مكلف الآن Somebody who is burdened now مكلف is a person who is burdened He is now burdened And a مكلف is a person who has 
The one that's burdened now, he is, in him is two things. Two things are present in him. He's baliq and he's aqil. He's baliq and he's aqil. He has reached age of puberty and he has sanity. He's not insane. He's not lost his sanity. Good. The second one is, the second one is, malaysa mukallafan al-an. It's a person who is not burdened now. He's not burdened now. What does that mean? Man min sha'nihi mutaklif. It is somebody who is as affairs is to be tak have taklif. The reason is because he doesn't have taklif is that either he lost his sanity or he hasn't reached age of puberty. One of the two is missing. Are you with me? This person, he, we say he's a mukallaf. Are you with me? But for the taklif to have taken effect on him, there is a mani' something stopping him from it. There is a what? A mani' Which is what? Either fuqdan al-aql, he lost his sanity, or uh, that is sigar, he's very young. He's very young. But fa'idha zala, if one of those removes, jara ali takalif, all of the burdens will take on him. It will take happen to him. So then what is that? the question now that arises? Then what's taklif? What does taklif mean? Taklif first, it means logat linguistically. Ilzamu ma fihi kulfa. It is to burden somebody on that which effort is required in it. It's to burden somebody with something that requires effort. A kulfa means mashaka. Effort. He has to strive. Or in a, that's the linguistic meaning. That is the linguistic meaning. The technical meaning is ma talabu ma fihi mashaka. It's to request. That which has in it what? Effort or pressure or um, burden on it. That is what it means technically. Then it brings us back to another point which is the talab, how many times is it then? Because if it has in its definition istilah and the word taklif, if it means talab ma fihi mashaqa, then what is talab? Talab is two types. The talab is two types. Talabu naw'an. Talabu fi'lin. The request to do something. The request to do something. And that is called an amar. Talabu fi'lin, which is what? Talabu fi'lin is amar. And the amar comes in two ways. The, either the amar, the command is what? In kana ala sabil ilzam. If it's made in a forceful manner, fawa wajibun, it's wajib. And if it's not in a forceful manner, it becomes famandubun. It becomes a sunnah. The second one is called talabu tark. To request for you to leave something off. And that is also, that's called what? Nahi, prohibition. The nahi is two types. If what you're prohibited from is what? In kana ala sabili ilzam. If it's in a forceful manner, the way you're told to leave it off, then it becomes faharamun, it's haram. And if it's not in a forceful manner, uh, for makruhun, it is disliked. It's makruh. And then that's what you find in the usulin, they say, uh, uh, the amr here is what? Amru, amru wujub, am amru nadb. They call it amru wujub, am amru nadb. Or they call it nahyun, nahyul tahrim, or nahyul karaha. That's what they say. And the last part is what? What takhiru? The, the, so we mentioned the talab. Now we're, we're, and we're still in the definition of the technical definition of the word hukum. Talab. Talab means what? We've mentioned it. We're now going to takhir. Takhir means what? You're given the choice. It's your choice. Yuradu bihil mubah. And what is meant by it is mubah. So how many of the, how many did we mention the ahkamu taklifi? Yes, we finished ahkamu taklifi. That's the ahkamu taklifi, the five. Which is what? Talabu fi'lin, it is to do something, which is amr. Amr. That amr either can be ala sabiri, ilzam, in a forceful manner. What, what is that then? Fawajibun, it's wajib. Or, it is not in a forceful manner, then it becomes sunnah. Two. Then the second one is talabu tark, you're requested to leave of something. The way you're told to leave, and so that is nahi, prohibition. That prohibition can be imma ala sabiri, ilzam, if it's in a forceful manner, it becomes haram. If it's what? In not a, it's not in a forceful manner. It becomes what? 
فمكروهن إذا كم خمس مكروه. Four. The fifth one which is what? أو تغيير you're given a choice and it's مباح. Five. We have those five. We have those five. أحكام التكليفي you finished it. Remember, this is an overview. The Sheikh after the next chapter he's going to start the أحكام التكليفي one after the other. One, two, three, four. So we're going to study wajib by itself one day. We're going to study huh? Uh, what do you call it? Uh, mandub by itself one day. And then we do the mubah by itself. And then we do the mahdur or the haram by itself. And then lastly, but not least, we're going to do the makruh for hakam taklifi. And then the sheikh is going to take you to sahih al batil. Pay attention. Now, there's one point that we need to mention, which is before we move on to the ahkam al wadiyya, which is that we just mentioned now that ahkam uh, taklifi, taklifi we just took, which it means. إلزام ما فيه مشقة. Oh, that's linguistically and technically we said طالب ما فيه مشقة. It's for you to be requested to do something in it is a burden, but مباح is not burden. So how does it fall under حكم التكليفي? Don't worry, we will come to it when we study مباح by itself. How it falls under it? How it falls under? Under it. حكم وضعية is the second one, and the Sheikh mentions from it. Ah, he mentions from it. Um, he mentions from it Sahih and Batil. He mentions from it Sahih and uh, Batil. But there are three others that he didn't mention, which is Ahkam al Wadaiyah, which is the second type of Ahkam al Shariah. I said the first one is Ahkam al Shariah to Taklifiya, and the second one is Ahkam al Shariah to Wadaiyah. And it's four, and it's, it's five. Sheikh only mentioned two, but they're five. What is the first one? Asbab sabab. The second one is what? Shard. The third one is what? Mani'. And the last two, which is the one he mentioned, uh, Siha and Fasad. Siha and Fasad. Those are the five. Ahkam al taklifiyya is five. Ahkam al shar'iyya al taklifiyya is five. And Ahkam al shar'iyya al wadiyya is also five. So, what is an example of asbab? And what's an example of shart? What's an example of mani? An example of uh, a sabab is ru'yatul hilal, the seeing of the crescent. It's a sabab, it's a means, it's a reason for the fasting to become obligatory. Before I mention that, it's important by the way. Barakallah feek. The, the ahkam al taklif, I have to explain it for you. Ahkam al wad'iyah, sorry. Ahkam al is not something which you are burdened to come with. Whereas Ahkam al is what? Ahkam al is something you are burdened to come with. This one you're not burdened to come with it. It's not your job to bring it. It's not your job. It's not your job. The Ahkam al is what? Sabab, Asbab, Shurut, Mawani'. And then siha wal fasad. Asbab, for instance, is is wujudu nisab. For example, we're going to use zakat as an example. If, for example, the nisab is found, which is the amount required, this is a sabab. Zakat has become obligatory on you because the sabab is present. We're also going to look at the second thing which is needed from you is that the sharat is is present. The what? The sharat is present. What is what is the sharat? The shart is an yahulaf an yahul al haul. Well, haul alladhi huwa shartu. The haul is the cycle goes around, the yearly cycle. We're going to say also the cycle is present, with the condition that there's no mani', which is the third one. What's the mani' here? Dain debt. Debt will will block from the debt and the zakat be paid for. Are you with me? It will be. And brothers. Huh? When the person comes with what? This, oh, the sabab is present, sorry. When the sabab is present, the shart is present. The mani' is missing. The mani' is what? It's absent. Then this is either called sah sahih or batil. Either sahih, you done it correctly, or you done it wrong, which is batil. Again, you can use, use as another example is, the sighting of the crescent is a sabab wujum siyam. The sighting of the crescent is what? That it's a sabab for 
the fasting to be obligatory on you. Example, the time to enter is a condition for what? For the prayer. It's a shart. It's not a sabab, it's a shart. Hayd. The menstruation for the woman is a mani' for her. She doesn't have to pray. It's a mani' it stops her from praying. It does. So those five are also called what? Ahkam al wadiyah The Shaykh is now going to start Ahkam al Taklifi. Ahkam al Taklifi. Wajib. He's going to go into it and we're going to stop here, inshallah.